And just like that, it is 6.33. So we've got a handful of the participants. Thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Lauren Fender. I'm the coordinator of reference and public service at the Belmont Public Library. Um, and I am joined this evening with the, uh, Pi what I call the Python guru at Belmont. Um, his name is Ray Smith. And basically, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. Uh, I assume that everybody sort of read the, the description of this program. Um, Ray is the, obviously the foremost person who knows the most about you know, creating computer graphics for a blind viewer. So I just wanted to make sure that I give him due diligence on his overall background, and he's going to be able to speak a little bit more about um, this specific project and how he sort of got started on it, um, as well as how it all works, obviously. So with that in mind, um, Ray is an alumnus of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and has a background in programming that span the professional world from MIT and GenRAD to IBM and Edial Alcatel Lucent and is interested in expanding individual in, in expanding individual understanding of how coding informs the world in which we live. And we've had the um, absolute fortunate pleasure of having Ray teach a number of Python programming classes that are, are very introductory um, for free to the public through the library, which has been a really awesome event. And then we also have a two-part series that's actually coming up in June um, for specifically for graphics programming, which is on the calendar uh, right now, which I'm always excited when I can have it in advance. So um, that's sort of a little bit about Ray. You don't need to know too much about me because I'm not the star tonight. It's Ray. And on that note, I'm going to hand it over to Ray. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, appreciate all you coming here on a, a evening next to see our uh, presentation. Um, I just would like to give a, a little thanks to some people that have been very helpful. First, uh, for the Belmont Li Public Library, uh, Lauren has been uh, uh, very helpful in uh, previous presentations and this one. And uh, she's uh, uh, volunteered her time here to, to help uh, me with the uh, presentation, which is always nice because uh, sometimes I'm concentrating on the presentation and I miss a hand up uh, for somebody who wants to ask a question. Uh, the other person I'd like to uh, especially thank is uh, Susan Sullivan for the Perkins School for the Blind. Uh, she's uh, one I work with in teaching some uh, blind and uh, uh, both uh, totally blind and uh, uh, visual learners. Uh, in fact, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, our, our current students, uh, Logan, Jacob, Kyle, and Prasha, that we uh, have been very fortunate in getting their feedback as to um, the some of the tools we're going to show you. And I have a co-worker who's most recently uh, joined me in helping, uh, uh, Sam Vanderswaff, that uh, also is associated with the uh, has been associated with the uh, Perkins School. Um, so uh, just a, a, a small a question, if, uh, by and large, if you don't need to, uh, uh, probably muting is, is best, maybe no video, because in the past, I'm not sure what the load is, unless you have a question. If you have a question, then certainly unmute and uh, you can show your video if you like. Okay, uh, just, to, just to be sure that everybody knows, because we're gonna count on it, uh, if, uh, if you're here, <laughs> uh, please raise your uh, electronic hand so I can uh, get a sense that you know where it is and uh, because it's different in different peoples. So let's see. Yeah, when I do it, it's, I'll raise my hand. So just to uh, essentially um, uh, show you, you and get familiar with how you do that. So then in, in the future here, when I uh, ask you to raise your hand on a couple of questions, uh, you'll be able to do that. And I'll know um, that every, you know people have, have done that. Okay. Is it going up and down? Uh, 
Let's see. Has everybody raised their hand that is going to? It seems like some people raised their hands and then they lowered their hands. I was just going to count the people so I knew that everybody had, had done that. Um, I find that uh, somewhat reasonable to, rather than doing polls and things like that, uh, it, it just seems like a way that we can get some feedback uh, from you, the audience. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, everybody, almost, I think so, almost. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. I guess you can all lower your lower your hands now, uh, or I can do that somewhere. Uh, okay. I thought that was okay. Um, okay. I was going to ask some questions, uh, and please, you know, uh, so I can get a sense of of. Uh, where you are and 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 what you uh, might be interested in. Uh, who of you is blind? Okay. Okay. Um, well, I was going to ask uh, secondary of the blind uh, who have some visual acuity, i.e., a visual learners. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have nobody who's uh, completely blind here. Okay. Well, maybe we do. Is that two? Okay. All right. Uh, who uh, works with or closely or uh, teaches the blind? Okay. All right, okay. Um, who of you uh, know Braille, no know, know Braille or use Braille? I mean, one doesn't need to do the do that for this presentation, but I just want to get a, a sense of uh, uh, who does. Okay. Uh, how many have done any computer programming? Okay, you don't have to, you don't have to apologize either. Um, okay, uh, thank you. That's a, um, all right, uh, as I said, here's our uh, introducing graphic to the blind one pixel at a time was my uh, title because I thought it would give a sense of we we're going to try to help out uh, the blind, uh, get a sense of graphics where they may not have that currently. Uh, we're going to demonstrate our tool. Uh, we, I, I just dubbed it as Turtle Braille because uh, it connects the Turtle uh, Python language with uh, Braille uh, tool of uh, blind. It's going to get, we're going to talk about the insight of the graphics that we do. And we've asked some questions already. Okay, the background, Where? how did I get here? I am a programmer. I have been a programmer for many, many years. Uh, most recently, in the last few years, I've started uh, teaching um, introductory programming to um, the beginner programmer um, using Python as an example. It's not, teaching Python to other people who have used programming and have done other programming language. It's truly people who have missed the programming boat somewhere along the line and might be interested. And it, much of the class is just to actually get them a real sense, what I consider a real sense of programming uh, so that they can make a decision as to whether they, they would like to do more programming or become a programmer. In that regard, uh, I found that, first of all, it's sometimes a bit hard to keep people's interest because programming can be very abstract, very uh, and tedious. Um, 
I find it fun, but there are cases if you don't, if you're just learning or getting into it, it can be very uh, tedious and uh, daunting. Uh, well, I've, I've found that pictures, if, uh, so you could see what you get, see what you did, uh, appear to be a very good. There are other other types of programs. In fact, most other programs are not pictures involved, but pictures tend to we talk with graphics tend to be uh, useful in getting people's attention and, as I said, getting them to see what they did. Now, mind you, this uh, soon became obvious to me uh, that uh, leaves out the blinds. The pictures are not very, uh, or at least uh, not very accessible. Uh, like I said, graphic tools are not geared to the blinds. The tools, actually the Braille and Bosser being the main one, are expensive, cumbersome, expensive, noisy, slow. And in our case, um, they're shared in another room down the hall. So it, it, as I said, our, our tool, our initial goal is to, was to help beginners learn programming. Uh, it's become an extended goal, uh, maybe providing graphics uh, for the blind, not necessarily programmers, but in general, simple graphics. Not, not, we're, not, we're not answering, making it, you know, like some, some, me, me, uh, medical miracles where they might do some implants and, and show some sort of pictures in, in the mental cortex and do that. That's, that's not what we're, that's not our goal. Uh, it may be somebody's goal, but our goal was to do simple graphics programs and but provide some sort of view. And um, non-programming view. I think this is what I'd like to present. A uh, Python program is pretty much a wordy nerdy etch a sketch drawing tool, a set of drawing instructions. Uh, can I ask another question? How many people have ever seen or used an etch a sketch toy? It used to be a toy, it would be uh, something about the size of a uh, laptop or a palm top. And okay, so many. All right. Well, that's that's uh, what I consider uh, Python here is in this process. In fact, here's the only program we're going to show in this uh, session. Uh, essentially, a simple program to draw a square. Uh, and in fact, just to show a few, uh, let's see. Da -da -da. Uh, let's see, I thought I saw, uh, annotations, but somehow, okay, this operation doesn't show annotations, so I'll just have to show with my squiggly thing. Essentially, uh, this is a little, a, a program to draw a square, as we said here, and in fact, the very beginning of the program, as just these pound signs, which say these are these lines, share loop, square loop, colors, dot py. It's just the name of the program. It's just a comment, a note to oneself saying, oh, this is the name of the program. If I have a piece of paper on a desk, I'll say, oh, oh that reminds me. That's, a, that's where it is. It's, we just say, what we're going to do? Display a multicolored square. So, in fact, you don't even have to know any of the rest thing to know what this things supposed to do, the directions to draw a square. Now, this next thing in red is pretty much the magic that makes this uh, Python program a graphics program. Essentially, it imports instructions that you can use to draw things. The next line is, is an instruction width, 40. All that says is the lines drawn in your uh, program are going to be 40 wide instead of one line. One is pretty much the, the width of a, a line here, like the width of the eye. The next thing, the colors equals a square bracket, a list of red, ye orange, yellow, green, just a list of colors, which we're going to use further in our instructions. The four color 
in colors is just a matter of a loop that says, we're gonna do this thing for every color in our colors list. First time we go through, we're gonna do it with red, where we say the CLR, the next one is yellow, orange, the next one is yellow, the next one is green. And then the stuff indented is just a set of things that we do for each loop. The color, we're gonna set the color. Forward means we're gonna just march 200 pixels. And in fact, we might as well mention the turtle comes from a, the language logo, which was invented by Seymour Papert and others about 50 years ago, that was just a way to help uh, teach young children how to do things, how to compute a program. And essentially the turtle would be put on a square and you could make it move around and it would draw things. And that's in fact what the turtle graphics does uh, today. So we just, and the done was just a uh, instruction to say, uh, we've completed our instructions. So we have three things. The thing on the left is what the sighted student sees after when he runs that program just before. And in fact, if you remember, you did red, you know, first of all, you did 40 width. So this is like 40 wide instead of one wide. And then we did red, we went 200, we made a right turn. We did brown, brown uh, orange, we made, went 200 and we made a right turn. We did yellow, we did 200, we made a right turn, we did green and so on. So that's exactly how we got the, this program, this instructions to draw something. That's what we did. Now, our addition, our tools addition is uh, obviously the, the blind cannot see this square. So it doesn't do them much good. So what we do is we said, okay, we do have a tool that the blind can use, uh, Bra uh, Braille embosser. It prints out letters. Yeah, you can do something more than that, but we, since we use a shared embosser and we know most people uh, may not have the access, we said, okay, we're going to divide up this region here into maybe 40 wide, which is often an embosser limit, although we found out that our local one is 32 and maybe 25 lines deep. So what we said is, okay, we divide the little things in little square regions and we take the color of that region and we put out a letter. And the letter is the first letter of the color. So notice this is red here. If you look at here, there's all the R's. If you look over here, the O's for orange, the Y's for yellow, the G's for green, and so on. Now, notice, of course, this is a lot coarser, a lot less resolution than uh, honest goodness graphics, but this means the user can go and take this, paste this out, and run their fingers over it and voila, they'll actually get a sense of maybe this is a square and maybe there are different colors on each side. When we develop this thing, we're, we're excited. We don't know, uh, we're not very commercial with Braille uh, or embosses and things like that. So we put together a tool that essentially says, okay, what is this sort of gonna look like? So this is just a, a sort of model of what it might look like. Now notice, because I don't remember Braille and I don't remember this is red, R for red, uh, I said, okay, I'll cheat a little bit. I'll, I'll make the dots, the colors of the, the colors they, the, they imply. And that way I can sort of remember that, oh yes, this is the red region. This is the uh, orange region, the yellow region and the green region. The main thing is that started out as a uh, sort of tool, development tool for me uh, to sort of remind me how things were going. Now, notice there's some changes between this and this. We'll get to that in a minute. Any questions so far? All right. Okay, uh, we'll just we'll cover that in a minute. Now, just to sort of uh, give you a sense, first, 
When I do this thing with sighted students, I usually try to give them the program for a square, a, a thin square, green maybe. And then I say, okay, run it. And then I say, okay, about 30 seconds later, I say, okay, uh, why don't you add this instruction to make the lines wider, the width 40, and they run that. And they say it's a, a wider edge square. And I say, okay, let's add a few of these things here to get a list of colors, and we run it again. And then we get the square you just saw. Now notice all that was like three different programs running in a time of a, two or three minutes, including instructions on how to load and run the file. The text uh, picture that our, my students use at Perkins, uh, they have to copy the text picture that we create. They have to transmit it to the Braille embosser. They have to go out the room, go down the hall, uh, get the embosser, retrieve the paper, and bring it back and, and sort of feel the paper. And notice that we have a shared embosser, so you know, they got to be sure that they don't pick up somebody else's piece of paper. Well, this, this was kind of a, a shock to me when I first uh, saw this because uh, I, had this I had this fantasy that, that when my students, uh, uh, blind students would be able to, 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 to emboss things and it, it would go zip, they'd be right next to their desk, they could feel over and say, oh, that's okay, let's do the next square, feel that. Well, that's not quite what it turns out. It takes uh, some minutes doing this. So it, it re reduces the impact. So we're trying to figure out you know, maybe how to, it's better than nothing, I think, because it really is a given the sense to see this square and, and pictures. So we say, okay, can we do better? And we're going to start showing you that by using a, an example. And now I will do this sort of um, uh, like I exp expect my uh, students to do it. Uh, essentially, uh, they start out with... Uh, um, let's see, uh, bringing up, and then they say, okay, we got to do a, a command line. And you don't have to learn this. This is just, I wanted to give you a sense of what my students have to. Uh, and here I, I, I enlarge this. My students don't enlarge this because it doesn't matter. But I do because it makes it uh, easier to see. So then uh, I, I distribute the software for this to the students, and I have them put it in a, um, a, a folder on the desktop. So essentially, each day when we start off, and notice there's been some versions, and then I usually have a folder in there for their work. And inside that, I have some subsections for, for them. And now, when I ask them to run their program or my a, a version of a program, I say pick Python. And sure enough, there is the program that you saw an example of on the screen. And so we'll run it live. All that is sort of background noise. Uh, and here is that square we talked about. And that gets done for the sighted folks. And File, then, square underscore loop underscore colors uh, dot py date. May 3rd, 2023, 1857 user, raise them. But now let's say we've... Green at row 12, column 16. We said we created this text picture. So that initially, when I did things, I would have it printed out with all this other gook and the text picture. And I tell them, okay, you go down here and you select that and you paste it, cut and paste. And I said, okay, we, we got to do a little better. Left six up three at row 23, column 31. So what we said is we take the picture that we create, this uh, text picture, and we put it in the, what's called a clip buffer. And we can, they can start They can start an a, a application to send their text to the embosser. I don't have an embosser, but I practice by saying, okay, here's another application that I can paste to called Notepad. 
and I can then uh, paste it and I can enlarge it so people see it. Uh, hey, here's a quiz, pop quiz, folks, back in school. Uh, why do you think I put commas here for the spaces? Anybody want to guess? Now, while you're thinking, uh, for you who might like to see it, we're going to, since we can paste things, we're going to open the chat. Where's our chat? Uh, here's our chat. And what we're going to do is, since it's in the clip buffer, we're going to paste it into the chat. And if you have a chat, you so choose, if you're an embosser uh, nearby or application, uh, you can uh, uh, select it from your chat and paste it in your um, embosser application. Now, uh, if you've seen if you see the chat, you probably get a, a guess as to what the uh, reason for the commas. And for you folks who may not have guessed yet, the issue is the people who do the embosser software know that their, their primary target is a, a blind person who a, bun a bunch of uh, run of a bunch of spaces is of absolutely no use. So the software collapses the run of spaces into one or two. I, I said, so I'm not familiar with Embosser, but I know from there, uh, the student's thing is it collapses. So it looks uh, essentially like what you uh, would uh, non, it does get similar to when people used to do uh, things to make pictures and they use constant with a text and then they put it in a normal, uh, some other font and all their nifty picture would not line up the way. So there is the, the um, our uh, example of the text that we create and uh, what our students do to uh, print that out. All right, so we, we said how it's, it's difficult, it's time consuming, laborious to um, do this. It's, it's not bad and it, and it paper is, uh, Good and so if you can do it fast, it's it's probably good. However, can we do better? And so we said as well. What if we took this thing that just was done for our um, own uh, sort of documentation and implementing uh, curiosity, and let's say we change this so that it not only displays the thing that look the picture, but we provide. Um, some audio feedback. And maybe it's not the same thing as having a paper embosser or two-dimensional uh, braille display, but we can uh, maybe get some, some fast feedback. G. Yellow at row 20, column 25. Now, you might say uh, I'm using this text, uh, the speech. I use the speech here because uh, things like NVDA or JAWS are very good for doing a lot of things, but they tend to uh, have to know what menu, what what window you're using. And since our tool, our, our environment has multiple windows, uh, JAWS can sometimes get confused and doesn't give us the control. So we use a our own uh, speech. All right, so if we now use our, our, we use a number pad to give us some flexibility of diff different directions, but we can go, Eight. Yellow at row 19, column 25. Eight. Orange at row 18, column 25. So we, we, get, at row 17, column 25. we get a picture of uh, our work. Orange at row 16, column 25. And what Eight. we're on. Orange at row 15, column 25. Eight. Orange at row 14, column 25. Four. Orange at row 14, column 24. Seven. Red at row 13, column 23. Now, Four. If you Red at row 13, column 22. Text takes some Four. time. And Red at row 13, column 21. Time is probably the Four. enemy. Red at row 13, column 20. 
people Four. would like to see this. Red at row 13, column 19. Four. Red so at row 13, column 18. What we do is we provide some ways to speed things up. And the first, and by the way, there's a lot of detail here, so don't worry about having to remember it. It's just a sense of you get the sorts of things we've done. And we don't guarantee that by any means that these are the exact things people should do. This is our experimentation of how we might do it. And we hope from feedback or people like yourselves that maybe uh, by requests we can get and do more um, helpful things. So the first thing we can do here, of course, to speed things up is we can take away some things like uh, where we're at is, is probably not all that. And mind you, uh, I, I don't claim this uh, um, uh, interface is friendly because it's not, but it's the only interface I've, I've got. So um, we'll have to live with that. We, we can improve that, I think, at some time. So now. Right. Five reds. No, forget Red. that. Let's let's just go uh, six. Six, orange. Six, orange. So nine. Here. Left one. Let's see. Yeah. One, orange. So there we we. It's a little faster. It the. Uh, um, Eight, orange. Four, orange. Four, red. So all it does is it notices echo. I'm gonna. I would normally take the 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 echo away because I know what I'm doing, but I, I just thought you would get a, uh, a sense of, so you can hear what I'm, what the key I'm striking. Now we said, okay, let's, we can maybe do some more things. We do some sort of analysis things, I call it, like right or left, we'll hit R. R, seven green and reds to left, two oranges to right. So that gives us sort of a, a, a fast picture of what's to the right and what's to the left. We can do a T for top and bottom. T. 11 blanks at above, two reds to below. And we can, um, let's see. Two, red. Let's see, this is. R, seven green and reds to left, two oranges to right. Okay, now we can also, we can skip A. to the. Green. To the uh, first one or skip T. to the Orange. other end or X, we can go X. back to where we started. Red. All right, so this is trying to give more fast feedback that the user can find out where they are. Um, now, just, just to show you that, that we, we're cognizant of this is looks uh, easy for me, uh, but sort of as I, when I was thinking about my grandchildren to show them what, the, what it really is like, this is what it looks like to our customer. Four, red, four. Now, red. mind you, the, the customer doesn't even see the dot move, but I wasn't going to go too far. So there, there we are. Let's let's put it back so people can see uh, what's. Uh... All right. So so we've tried to do more. Now we talked about we we had these analysis things to go to the you know sort of speed over the light colors. Well, we said, well, if we could do that in analysis, maybe we can do it for the uh, person for themselves right away. So we made the cursors. Left, three reds, red, right, five reds, red, right, two oranges. So there orange. we go. Down, five oranges. So it skips orange. over Down. Um, and tells two you yellows. how many uh, like Left. squares it goes Seven over. Yellows. Yellow. Left, two greens, green, up, eight greens. All green. right, so uh, that's some more. We did experiments, and all these are really experiments. So to, we really find, got to find out more about you know how useful these are. So in essence, we still said it's still, it's still word feedback is is still not so fast. And so we said, well, okay, what if we code the colors? And where we're at in a tonal base. And so, in fact, if we just try, which I call beat mode, six reds. Now, it's still when it goes over, I can't figure out a, a way to get to do as well as the, the announcing the numbers. But let's say. 
Now, just a, a, a description of what this thing is, is we, we encode the uh, color as sort of a pitch. And we just arbitrarily started with R, O, you know, the, the spectrum. And we just went up in pitch for each, each uh, color. Now we also say, okay, we have three pitches or three, three beeps. And the beeps are where you're at, at full volume, uh, the expected next square at half that volume, and the next square you're likely to go to at a quarter of your volume. Now notice we we did the colors in pitch, and then we had to try to figure out what a, a blank would be. So we just said a blank is probably you're off the figure, so we'll make it a little higher pitch. And if you listen, five blanks, two greens. Uh, these, uh, in addition to uh, faster, these uh, beeps are in stereo in that. If you're close to the left, you get a higher left. Uh, and mind you, on a laptop, it's not so great. But with uh, ear um, with earphones, there's a lot more differentiation. Now we also said, okay, um, it's sort of better, and this is a guess on my part, uh, closer to the left or closer to the right edge is probably more meaningful than a little to the left or a little to the right of center. So what we do is we do a nonlinear uh, representation. Your, your sound and your various uh, sides is uh, sort of higher and higher as you get closer to the edge. And what we mean by the edge is the edge of the figure. We, we figure out where the, the figure is in the thing and we concentrate on that. In addition to our uh, left and right, we... Three greens. Eight greens. We try to consider the lower part a foreground, higher, higher volume, and uh, further away, uh, lower volume, to try to give... Say, it's not as important in this, I think, small thing, but it may you may see a more uh, important aspect later on when we show a little bit more. Any questions so far? As I said, don't worry about the memory. It's just sort of the things that we, we know that there are probably other mechanisms that we can give feedback. What we're mainly trying to do is try to investigate the ways that we can get um, improve feedback, speed up feedback. I think speeding up is probably the most important thing because uh, the mind only, you know, we only have a certain length of time when we hear something to and to remember what we heard. Same thing with sight. Yeah? But of course, the retina has memory. So, all right. Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, if if we um, if we're let's let's go to the edge. Fifteen blanks. Uh, we have a, a a character G, which it tends to. Um, oh, it didn't show up there. It, it tends to put you right at the uh, the figure. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, we've done things to sort of speed things up, but. We still have a situation where if you look at the uh, picture on left, and even the sound, and on the right, you notice there is a lot of uh, sort of detail that you don't see here. So is there anything we can do about that? So what we said is, OK, what can we do? We said, well, maybe we can don't magnify things. So notice it's still even with the beeps. It still it still takes a while. So what we do is um, let's just remove our history and uh, redraw. Just so it shows you what we what we have.
Okay, so let's say we want to look at this upper left-hand corner a little bit more detail. So what we do is we say, okay, we will just go over this. Well, somehow it pops off there. So let's see. Uh, we want to forget that thing off to the side. So we're going to try to remove the history. And now... So we just select a piece of our, our square. And we say, okay, the magnification, we're gonna go Alt M for, and we're gonna say, we're gonna select. And it says that we're gonna look at that piece and we're gonna view that. Audio draw window. So magnification of region minimum X is, minus 25, a new, minimum Y, uh, minus 48, maximum X, 50. Maximum Y, 48. But if that's Green at rolling column 7. Now, magnification has 449 cells. Blind, but for you, mostly, I will move to the side and show you uh, that thing. Now, I won't go to waste the time, or at least uh, uh, just believe me that we can go arbitrarily. We can go back to the original. And of course, the uh, blind can go all tab and move around windows. Uh, I'd like to make it easier than that, but so far I've not been able to. And or they can select a piece of the uh... one green at row nine, column six, one green at row ten, column five, one. And we can do another green at row 15, column so, sixteen. Um, magnification has four hundred and forty seven cells. Now, mind you, uh, we we just went back uh, to do this and say we can, of course. Uh, we have a, a W, which w. essentially, we'll just show it here. It, it, it shows you the new picture. So you can build up a, a set of pictures uh, and then emboss them all. Uh, if we, we will just go to our uh, chat and we will send that to you. So you have the, the uh, another picture of uh, uh, the embossing. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, okay. So this is this is uh, essentially a port at row twenty two, column twenty five. All right. So we we showed how to get a little bit more detail, uh, but still we go back to the. It takes such a long time to see this, to hear this picture, if you will, to to move around, even with your own. Uh, so can we do anything better? And essentially, uh, after some thought, much thought, uh, it occurred to me if I'm if I'm a sighted person, I sit here at my desk and I look, not even sort of concentrating on a particular area, I can sort of see there's there's a, this piece over here and there's this piece over there and so on. Uh, would it be nice to be, or would it be possible to do that? So what we came across is a scanning approach that says, okay, let's see, can we just move across the, with the computer going across, the program going across and giving them audio feedback? And uh, essentially I'll tell you that, yes, we can, but it, it takes a lot of time. And so it's, it's slow. In fact, we spend a lot of time trying to speed things up using the same techniques we used in moving around by hand, skipping over, uh, you know, uh, like squares, skipping over spaces, and so on. Uh, the most recent approach, and it's still experimental, is we said, well, what if we just say the perimeter? Because if we give the user some sort of a perimeter for free, uh, information, they can do the other uh, stuff uh, and get more of their picture. So in fact, we do for scanning, we say, okay, let's start. Now this stuff to the left is, is just my algorithm for finding the, the edge. And to be honest, we, we this to the left to be desired. Now, because it takes a fair amount of computation power to, to figure out these uh, tones, uh, we sort of split it up because we'd rather get the people half the picture early and add to it. So, in fact, that's what this thing is. It's adding 10 cells to the picture 
uh, every you know every so often, and just adding those cells to the perimeter. Now, if you get down, you'll notice my perimeter searching thing doesn't work too well when it's when something's at the close to the edge. It's hard to get to the other to surround it. And notice you can sort of hear the um, the um, the fact that it's on the left. Remember, at the top is farther away. I, I may have uh, extended. Maybe we'll have to uh, loud that up a little bit. So still, sad to say, um, even for a non-complicated picture like this, a little piece of it, um, it's slow. That's, that's sad to say. That's, you know, so one last attempt. Each one of these beeps takes some time to set it up, start it. And so we said, OK, can we computationally combine all these together in one loud, you know, one large signal that's get, and then send that, blast that out? And so this is sort of the example here. So let's see. Uh, we'll stop T. our scan. Three blanks to above to a red. Three blanks and, to below. Oh, sometimes it's T. Three blanks to above to a red. Three blanks to below. Uh, wait, why is it not? Okay, so we're going to go up to the scanning. And we're going to do combined wave, which is that idea of taking all the different beeps of all those perimeter cells and jam them into one long signal and blast that out. So we're going to say C for combined wave. And we're going to start it. Now, mind you, there is, uh, because I seem to kind of lose track of where things are, I, did, I put a, a, a rather high-pitched tone to synchronize one's uh, thinking of, this is the beginning of the sweep. And so every time it comes around, you'll hear that loud beep, sorry for the loudness uh, and the shrillness. So that'll give you a sense of where you're starting, which I think is in the upper left-hand corner. And since you won't see a visual, you'll, you'll have, just have to believe me. So, okay, so now we'll do a start. It's doing the calculation perimeter. To be honest, uh, I can barely, although uh, my ears may not be great, uh, I, I can get a sense it's, it's, it's going around. I can get a sense that it's on the edge, but I don't know. Uh, this is something that has to be, you know, going to get some feedback to the real audience, from the real audience. So, that's, that's sort of our highest performance to scan. If you, it gives that parameter, uh, and uh, I hope that will be, and if, we, if not, we'll hopefully we'll find some new things. Okay, I won't uh, hit you with that too much longer. Okay. Um, let's see, there's our magnification, our scanning. Um, as I said, uh, uh, let's see. I guess there's one more thing, which is sort of, uh, uh, I will say, experimental and off the beaten path, but uh, an attempt to sort of show that this thing could be used in more than just the, the programming uh, uh, sort of method or looking at, I essentially added a, um, essentially a drawing uh, capability. So uh, let's see, I think we see. empty the screen out and um, let's see, we're gonna take sound away because that's a pain. 
And we're also going to take the echo away because that's also. And uh, let's see. OK, I'm going to set draw mode. And OK, we just now drawing is something I haven't been spending much time on because it really wasn't the main thing. but. It, it uh, might be of use. Uh, so let's see. Yep. I keep using the cursor things, which sort of slanted across the edge. Okay, now it's sort of like a, a a a plotter, if you will. So you can say down with a D, you can say C, uh, and make a color B for blue. Yeah, I can make some pictures. Oh. Uh. Oh. Ah. Ah. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, there's our thing. Hi, it's supposed to say I didn't draw very well. Uh, and just to show you that we haven't left out folks, if uh, they so choose, you can actually use uh, a mouse motion. To draw. So that's it. Uh, that that is our uh, all the features of our tool. Um, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Obviously, we could we could uh, uh, write this out. And uh, although sometimes toward the edge, I think we we run off so that. Uh, and of course, we could take the picture here. Post it. And uh, let's see. Um, so that's, that's as I said, the drawing is, is more of a add on. Uh, we certainly, it's certainly not a, the best uh, GUI for that I've drawn uh, for the things, but it, it, it tried to show the, the idea. So, of course, this, this we could uh, uh, essentially. Uh, Turn on the you can you can you can search around this and and so they can see what they're doing using the uh, audio scan. Um, so let's see. Um, I said that's pretty much our tool at the moment. Uh, it's still experimental. I, I we're hoping to get some feedback from people like yourselves. Um, we'll just let you know that uh, we'll do some question and answer in a moment, but just to let you know that. Uh, there's a potential follow-on lecture or two if if there's interest. Uh, one is uh, so the introduction to programming, the same course we have for the blind, and that's essentially a, a shortened or maybe a, a one or three session period of actually providing you the software, uh, and we just do it like we're doing, over, and you would actually um, create the drawings and and look around and and see if. Uh, uh, they would make sense to you. Um, and then the other uh, uh, possibility is an implementation of Turtle Braille for uh, essentially maybe a one, one and a half hour lecture or presentation on the implementation of this tool. It's mainly directed toward uh, with high level overview covering the primary ideas and process in the implementation of this tool and mostly directed at uh, uh, technical or uh, person, uh, programmer, uh, Python knowledgeable. So those two things are uh, will be done if if there's some interest in uh, uh, people. 
So I will, I will uh, essentially, uh, let's see, we will go to, uh, where are we? Question and answer. Does anybody have a question or comment? Anybody? Because that's we're we're hoping to get some feedback Hi, now and later. Yes, Gina. Yes, um, this is Gina Fugate. I was wondering if any of your kids, um, the students, were using Braille displays. Um, pretty much. I mean, they have note takers, but uh, and they have. Uh, I said the brailler, but they we didn't. Uh, now a note, a note uh, display is that a uh, two dimensional uh, braille? Um, I mean a braille display. So if you're referring to like a braille note taker, then that would have braille cells on on one line, usually thirty two or forty. There's some smaller ones. Um, right. Depending but you on mentioned the it all. What? what? What was the one that you mentioned? Braille display is a general term for it. So it has refreshable braille cells, like little metal pins that come up just for one line, typically. For one line, uh, not not uh, like uh, 40 characters by 25 or something. Correct. Yeah, one line. So like when um, students are typing that they can- Yes, edit, yes. Especially uh, text. I, I think they have that. I think they have that. I, I'm not- uh, uh, the difficulty for us is uh, it's, it's kind of hard to see a picture one line at a time. But uh, so are you familiar? Is anybody here familiar with uh, I, I think there's a, 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 Tom, a, a Tom, I think there's one out there that, that is a two dimensional, but it's not very big. Uh, and that's what I was, I was saddened by, because to make what it would really be nice is uh, if you could have something that has the uh, number of uh, lines and uh, uh, they could provide these pictures in one shot. They're working on something called the Monarch. If you look that up through the American oh, yeah, Printing I think House. I've heard of that. Yes, um, it's, it's definitely in the works. Um, I just know my students struggle with coding and um, you know, editing the all the brackets and parentheses and yes. different things in coding languages. So that has been a, a challenge as well. Um, we haven't focused as much on graphics, so this is really intriguing. Yeah, I said this. This uh, graphics is not quote all programming. Uh, it's uh, I find it useful, especially useful for the very uh, beginner type that that, you, that other examples uh, you know drawing a, you know you know doing a multiplication table or uh, you know doing an ATM machine or something those those things may be uh, fun but um, you, you sort of need some background to do to do those I think well but yes yes uh, we we uh, I don't know where the shoemaker's children, but uh, I said we they they do have no taggers uh, they have the embosser, but they don't have uh, you know a lot of uh, the cutting edge. And one of the things that I I tell people about this uh, a tool here is that um, it, it it's not going to compete with the stuff coming out of the media laboratory at MIT. Uh, but then again, how many people are going to get a hold of that in the next uh, uh, couple of years? Whereas uh, this tool here um, with the audio feedback uh, is something that anybody who has a laptop uh, can could use today 
and and with no extra you know equipment. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I I I, uh, I let you know I let people know I'm still using it. Now I also believe fervently that uh, if you had higher performance equipment, you could uh, add that to that to this tool and even do better. Like if if you had a uh, two dimensional uh, 40 by 40 character display, um, you could you know slam the pictures to that. Uh, I don't know how fast those are now, but if they let I my my Walter Mitty uh, imagination says, oh, it should be it should be as fast as the uh, display in front of me here now. That's probably not the case yet, or will be for a while. But if it, with this technique of of uh, you know doing the the things and doing a a coarser you know a, a low resolution, uh, if you had a high speed uh, device. I think that would make this even more powerful because then you could get the the braille as fast, and you could just use the the audio feedback on some of the the uh, more esoteric things, like to do the selection of uh, you know to to do the magnification process. You could use the audio feedback to select a piece and then get a new picture of the of the thing and and continue on like that. So I, I think that this tool here will work with what people have on their laptops and their desks and homes right now. But also if we had uh, higher performance um, uh, brailing uh, equipment, um, you, could, you could make use of that. I also mentioned that uh, when I first thought about this process, uh, I know that there's some equipment that takes a brailer and uh, does uses a six or eight dots and and it makes a, a finer resolution, you know, poor man's uh, small square. But I went with this and I said, color is important. And I, uh, at least especially in these simple uh, drawings that we make, and I wanted to be, I, I figured that, you know, making the, the letter uh, for, the, for the color, I think was important. I also thought about schemes of, um, if you had a run of, Red or green in a certain direction, you could spell the you could the software you could write and and spell it all out with the red or green if you had enough uh, runs in that direction. But then I realized that's going to make it more like a word game and harder to understand. Uh, I I think uh, the idea of having a single letter for the color, uh, which is obvious, it's going to be there. It keeps it doesn't make uh, words run in together and things like that. So um, uh, that's one of the reasons I, I kept. I, I, I sort of settled on, um, you know, a letter, the first letter of the color. Any other uh, questions, ideas? Hmm? Anything? Oh, okay. Uh, I said, if, if you're interested in either of those, uh, uh, you know, presentations, uh, they'll they'll only happen if if. But I'd be glad to do them if, uh, uh, or if you want to talk, to, you know, you can contact me. Uh, you know, Ray Smith at alum .mit .edu, uh, uh If you want to copy the slides, you you could also uh, send me an email to that effect, and I'd. I'd send you a, a copy of the the slides, and I guess we're going to have a uh, a recording of this, right? So uh, I guess uh, I guess uh, maybe if you're if you have if you know somebody that might want to look at this uh, or hear this uh, a recording, um, you know, get in touch with uh, uh, Lauren, and uh, we can you know she'll show you uh, tell you how to to look at the when the uh, recording is available. Yeah, so what I'll probably do, um, and thank you, Ray, this was, um, I am not an instructor for the blind, but I found this fascinating just as somebody who's familiar with the Python aspect of it to some degree. 
Um, so I did put your email in the chat if anybody just wants to copy and paste it from there. Uh, and what I'll also do in a follow up email, um, we have a YouTube, the library has a YouTube channel. So all the recordings generally go up on there and live there until somebody tells us to take it down, uh, which won't be this one. Um, so I would imagine that'll probably go up within the next, uh, you know, maybe day or two, hopefully by Friday. And then I'll send out a follow up email, including um, your email as well, Ray. So people will get it. Anybody who registered, because I know there were some people who had registered but hadn't weren't able to make it. Uh, well, thank so I'll include all that information there. Excellent. All right. If uh, nobody has any other questions, uh, I hope uh, you got some information. And uh, if you uh, would like, I would certainly appreciate uh, being able to uh, work with uh, uh, any of you, uh, show you more and get, you, get uh, uh, more feedback as to how we could make this uh, tool uh, better. I will see you all. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, Thank you. Sounds great. And like I said, you'll get a follow-up email from, from me that'll include the YouTube recording and Ray's uh, email address, too. And sounds like some people are already interested in being in touch, so that's always great. Um, should be a fun, fun thing to explore in the future. So thank you all so much for being here. And uh, like I said, you'll see an email from me shortly. All right. Thank you. Have a great rest of the evening, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.